Hello, I'm Jeff Zwerink, and I am glad you're joining me today. I also have here in studio a good friend and colleague, Ken Walgamuth. He is a geologist, has been working in the area of petroleum geology for more than three decades, and is the founder of Solid Rock Lectures. And today, we're going to be looking at ice cores, and what do they tell us about the age of the Earth? Ken, it's good to have you here again. So, you know, we... we uh, look at how to date things, you know, tree rings are nice because you can count things, but we also have something similar with ice cores. So let's just kind of give us a little bit of background. How do we use ice cores to date things? Okay. Uh, I consider tree rings as being the very simplest mm -hmm. because we can, anybody can count into the rings, okay? I consider ice cores the next of the, to the simplest one in the sense that in this winter time, snow falls on Greenland. Right. And in the summertime, that snow gets heated up by the sun and it forms a hoarfrost layer. Okay. So there's a difference of, of light and dark, light and dark, mm -hmm. that's a result of this process so of summer winter. So very similar to the tree rings then. Somewhat similar, but, but not as precise in right. the sense is not as clear. Right. I mean, okay. tree rings are the best, no question about it. Okay. But the ice cores are a very different type of record. They're up on, they're up on Greenland and ice cores are in Antarctica. So, right. so that's a big difference. So what, what, as we've used the ice cores, how many years can we count? How many layers can we count? What sorts of things have we found as, we've, as we have analyzed these ice cores? Okay. The scientific community in the 1990s, as I recall the time window, uh, made a decision jointly between American scientists and Europeans to, to drill on Greenland up at the summit, right in the very middle of the highest, thickest range of the ice sheet in Greenland. What, why is that important to be in the middle? Uh, that is where the maximum thickness will be. Okay. And out near, the out near the fringes, the ice is slowly flowing out toward the coast. So it is not stable. Gotcha. It, okay. And, and right so in the center. So it's more reliable record. It's a more reliable it. record. Okay. okay. So the Europeans and the Americans separately drilled ice cores two miles from the ice surface of that ice sheet down to bedrock. Mm -hmm. So they had these two big long records. Right. Uh, the data shows that we can measure some properties of the water or the, the ice that's there mm -hmm. that give us an indication when the end of the last ice age occurred, which was about 11,500 years ago. Okay. And since then, uh, North America and the world has had basically a very uniform climate for the last 11,000 years. Okay. So that's number one. All right. Number two, how much passage of time? I was privileged to visit with Richard Alley, who's a professor at Penn State University, and he was active in this ice core research. Okay. He himself was up on that ice sheet for month after month after month counting the layers as they brought the ice cores out and they looked at them mm -hmm. at the Quonset huts where they were doing the work up on the ice sheet. Okay. I asked him, how far back did you feel that you could count those layers with your eye before they got too thin? Mm -hmm. And he told me about 50,000 years. 50,000 years. That's a pretty long period of time. That's a long time. That demonstrates that the Earth is at least well over 50,000 years. And then presumably beyond then, that, just the weight of the ice is compressing the layers? Or why, why, does it, why do you have problems beyond that? That's exactly correct. So deeper than that... Ice under lots of pressure begins to flow. Okay. So there's an understanding that down below that 50,000 years as the ice has gotten squeezed with the, you know, one mile thick of ice on top, mm -hmm. the pressures are heavy, and slowly the ice layers are thinning, thinning, thinning right. as the ice is slowly flowing out toward the coast. Right, okay. Okay? So in that process, for deeper than what they could see with the eye, They've also used electrodes because there are different chemical species that fall on the ice in the wintertime versus the summertime. Right, okay. So they use chemical species and electrodes to measure those differences to get timing on deeper than that. So how far back, using the more sensitive techniques yeah. to see the layers, how far back can they push? The estimate for Greenland is at about maybe 100,000 or 120,000. Okay. The, the right. challenge is down in bedrock. Right there's a lot more uncertainty. Right, but okay. this basically, this is 100,000 years basically of a climate record mm -hmm. that geologists have been able to discover. So it's a powerful piece of evidence observing the tail end 
and the nature of the temperature shifts back and forth during the last ice age. So, so how would you respond to someone, and I've heard people argue that, well, we can't trust the ice cores to date because, you know, we see these planes buried in wreckage that are a whole bunch of ice on top. And so clearly there weren't planes 40, 50,000 years ago. So this is not a reliable record. Yeah. Uh, there is a record that is re what's referred to as the Lost Squadron, where a group of uh, airplanes that were flying uh, during World War II could not land over in Europe. So they came back and they landed on the ice, mm -hmm. very southern, southeastern edge of Greenland. So they were very close to the coast. Mm -hmm. So over a 50-year period, those planes were buried into about 250 feet of snow and ice with that extra every high uh, high snowfall that's along the coast. And the planes were also moved, uh, I forget how much, it's a mile or two away from where they originally landed as they were buried in the ice because of this flow of the ice. So that's not a location to get a reliable record mm -hmm. long term and isn't directly related to uh, the ice cores up on the summit. 